Hello, YouTubes. Okay, so I'm super excited to take you on a tour of this car that I bought back in September. Um, I've been looking for a car probably most of the year. Just uh, wanted to get something old, something fun, uh, something to work on a bit, make my own. So um, I was on a long hunt for a long time, constantly checking websites, um, Kijiji, um, Facebook Marketplace, and wanted to get something in a, in a Mercury or an old Ford. Um, I'm a bit of a Ford guy, but not exclusively. Was also looking at um, Impalas, Caprices, uh, Firebirds, Camaros, um, anything really cool from any manufacturer. I actually also looked at a 1977, um, 1977 Dodge Charger Midnight Edition. Uh, really cool 1970s uh, personal luxury cruiser. Loved it, but uh, ultimately didn't uh, capture my imagination. So um, kept looking and stumbled on this beauty here. And it's a 1967 Mercury Cougar. Um, it's a bit apart right now because we're doing a bunch of work on it. But um, when it's done, I think it's gonna be a really cool car and uh, super excited. So I'm gonna take you for a quick tour just to show you around the car, some of the features. Um, it's, it's more of a preview, not a full tour, but uh, I just was really excited to show you guys the car and to give you um, a look at uh, what I've been working on. Okay, so without further ado, let's go have a look at the Cougar. So one of the features I wanna point out about the Cougar is that it has a vinyl top. Now, most of the Cougars that came out of the factory for this first model year were vinyl top cars. So about 60 or so percent were vinyl tops. So this one is like most of them. Um, but even though the top is in pretty good shape, there are a few spots underneath. And this is the problem with vinyl tops is apparently they never painted the roofs all the way before they put these tops on. And so they uh, can get some moisture underneath them, it gets trapped in and it eats away at the, bit, at the metal a little bit and you get some rust issues. The top of the roof here is all really solid. There aren't any noticeable pits or, or anything like that or, or any, any bumps or it, you can hear it's all pretty uniform sound. But as you come down here, you do notice down in this corner of the rear window, there's definitely some crunchiness. So one of the things that we are gonna do is we're gonna go inside, take all this trim off from in, inside the car. Uh, I think it attaches from underneath. Some of the stuff I might have to take off from the outside. Not 100% sure yet, but I know there's uh, lots of resources out there to show me how to take this trim off. And then we're gonna peel this up, see how bad it is. And what may end up happening is we're gonna take this top off um, and then see how things really are underneath, address any issues, and probably going to decide to stick without the top and do a slick top conversion. So that means that for all of the trim holes for this piece here, we're gonna have to fill those in, but uh, I think it'll look really good. Um, there's another Cougar on this farm. It's not a vinyl top car and it looks awesome. So I think, uh, I think that's the route we're gonna go. Just wanna give you a quick shot of the interior. The battery is disconnected, so the interior lights off, but this is like a, a saddle color leather. I can't remember what the actual um, color is called, but it's uh, the tan saddle leather. Um, it's actual leather, it's really nice. Um, you got the standard Cougar interior here. You got the, the wood rim steering wheel and the, uh, the dash treatment. Um, you got the XR7 console with the clock. The clock does work. Um, I'll do a later video. I'll show you a, a demo. Unfortunately, there's like a, a newer style 1980s, 1990s tape deck that's been installed in this car, uh, complete with these sweet um, 1990s aftermarket speakers. Well, maybe early 2000 style. Anyway, I'll give you a view back here of them. You can see they... They really match the aesthetic of the car. Uh, <laughs> so they're, they're probably gonna get replaced with something that looks a little nicer, but that's, that's a little lower on the, uh, on the priority list. Um, we'll just get a look at the interior door card here. It's all in pretty good shape. 
Uh, there's some minor wear, but nothing major. Um, it's, uh, it's actually held up really well if you consider the age of the car. So um, yeah, pretty pleased with the interior. Probably won't do too much work here. The, the carpet's like brand new. I, I'm not sure if it's original or if it's been replaced at some point, but uh, yeah, if I had a light and I'll do a, like I said, I'll do another video later just to give you a little more detail. This is more of a preview. Um, we'll take a look at the carpet and the other interior features and you'll see that some of the stuff is, is really, really good shape. Um, one thing I did want to show you is it's got these super cool door handles. So they come up like this and then you pull up. So kind of neat. As you can see here, we do have four wheel drums on this car. So um, I know a lot of people prefer the disc brakes and I'm one of them, but uh, these, these do seem to work really well. It is, it is power brakes. So um, it, it does stop well. I drove it a little bit before we started working on it and stopping has no issues, especially for an old car. I was surprised actually at how well it stopped knowing the age of the car and the fact that it doesn't have disc brakes, did pretty good. So um, probably will do a disc brake upgrade at some point, but right now, not too worried about it. The last thing for this video that I wanted to show you is the engine bay. It's really nice in here. It's been detailed. Um, it's been upgraded with uh, the export brakes in the back and this um, Monte Carlo bar here. Uh, I never drove the car without these things, so I don't know if it does anything at all in terms of uh, stiffness for the chassis um, and driving dynamics, but um, they look really neat. And it's one less thing I have to do if I was interested in doing this stuff. So pretty happy to have it. So the export brace is neat. Um, you may know that Cougars and Mustangs have from the factory a, um, a single piece arm that goes here and then a single piece arm that goes there as the bracing. So it's not actually all the way connected. Uh, but for uh, some export markets, they required the full bracing. So uh, that's why I think it's called the export brace. Someone can mention in the comments if I'm completely off base there, but that's my understanding of why this is called an export brace. It was, uh, it was needed. I think it was uh, some European markets required um, the stiffer bracing. And so, there we go, export brace. Uh, one neat thing about the engine is, uh, this is a 289 by the way. Um, it's got these really cool finned aluminum valve covers with uh, the Cougar Kitty on them right there. So that's kind of neat, neat little custom touch. Uh, and just in case you're wondering, this is a, uh, a two barrel car. So two barrel, 289, rated for, uh, I think gross 200 horsepower. Not the fastest thing in the world, but she she moves down the road okay. Good for cruising. And uh, just about perfect little motor for this car. Well, there she is. Um, that's, the, that's the new toy, new to me anyway. Um, we're gonna be doing some work on it over the next few months. Hopefully get it into paint sometime this spring or summer. And she'll be good as new. So uh, yeah, thanks for watching the video. If you enjoyed it, please like and subscribe and don't forget to ding the bell for more cool car content. And uh, feel free to give me a follow on Instagram at automophiliac. Um, it's, uh, I post a little bit more there every so often so you can uh, enjoy some new car content more frequently. Anyway, have a good one. TTFN.